Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about data snapshots. All right, so let's start at looking at the data set that I currently have. This is basically my employee data. I have a list of employees with their start date, end date, um, their uh, termination date, and which cost center or, or organization they belong to, and some uh, demographic information, right? Now, uh, using this data, let's say I want to figure out how many employees we hired or what were their start dates, right? So I can uh, easily do that. I can select start date, uh, employee ID, and let's say I uh, my report is typically at the month level, right? So I do not want quarter and day. It's all at the month level. I can expand this out. Now I have uh, the information that I need. I know all the uh, that that we had a my data data set started in 2017 uh, December. So uh, we moved to a new system. So there's a big spike, and then we see how many employees we hired over time. And July uh, 2019 there was a big hire. So a lot of people were hired. We had a big initiative or something like that. So it gives me that information. Now let's see how many employees we terminated over time. So let's say end date. Uh, so I can use end date for this and then the same thing, employee ID. And again, all my information is, uh, all my reporting that I need to do is at the month level. So I'm going to delete quarter and day from here and expand this chart out. taking a second to do it and there you go now I have the information that I need how many employees were terminated over time and this last uh, date 999 December that's that in my data set that means that employee is still working for us so uh, there's a whole bunch of employees working currently for us okay as of this data set so this is awesome information this is good information now the next thing I want to do is figure out how many employees uh, were working over time for us. So uh, at any given point in time, how many people did we employ? Right. So can I do this with this data set? Let's go look at the data again, right? Now I have, I have just a start date and the end date of an employee, but I do not have a, a, a row or a transaction for each month. Uh, so I need to uh, basically create a row uh, for each month uh, so that I can figure out how many employees um, were working for me at that, uh, in a particular month uh, so I can trend it over time. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to go to transform data. Now this is uh, my data set. I've done some transformations to it uh, to, bring, to get it to the point uh, that I have right now. Now, the next thing I want to do is, like I just mentioned, create a row for each month for each employee. So I'm going to start with, uh, uh, go to home, start with uh, entering data. Right. So I know my data set starts from uh, December of 2017 and goes all the way through uh, 2019. So I have... Uh, I have already uh, created a list of start and end dates for each period. And I'm going to paste that here. Uh, and uh, you, uh, I just copied the start and end date from Excel, but you can create use Excel as a data source instead. I'm, I'm just using um, enter data feature here. Let me give this a name. Let's say this is period start, and this is period end. And let's call this HR or employee details right so now um it's, like i said we have a start date and end date for each period and now let's see how we can uh, go about using this to create um or create snapshots next thing so now now the employee details is here now the next thing i want to do is merge these two tables the data table and employee details now we need a common column to merge any two queries, right? So let me create that uh, column. 
I'm going to add an index column and give it the same value throughout. So I'm going to say in the add an index column, make it custom and say starting number is one. And I do not want to increment this. I want this to be zero throughout. So <clears throat> there you go. And I'm going to do the same thing in data as well. Create an index column, custom, starting with one and zero. Click OK and wait for it to create an index column for each. Okay, now that we have an index column, um, we can merge these two tables. But before doing that, here's what I want to do. I want to filter out the data uh, to just one employee. So we can see exactly what's happening, right? So I just pick the first one I find um, and filter out the data. So I'm going to select 1017, click OK, just add a filter step, which we can take out later. Right. So let's wait for it to filter here. Now let's um, go to employee details and merge these two tables. Uh, go to home, merge queries. And we got to merge it using index. So I'm going to select index on the first one and index on the bottom table. Click OK and wait for the merge to happen. Once merge is done, I'm going to expand out the data columns and I don't need the prefix, I'm good with it. Click OK and uh, expand out the tables. Okay, um, so what do we have here? We have a row for each of the periods we created. We, we a row for the same employee. So we remember if, we, if I go to the data, uh, data query here, we filtered it to one employee, 1017. So uh, we, since uh, we merged it, we have a row for each period uh, for that employee. Now, if I go back to the data here, um, you see that this particular employee has a start date of July 2019 and is uh, currently employed with us. So if I go back to employee details, re really th this employee sh should have only valid records starting from July 2019 onwards, and th the remaining records is not valid for this employee. So we need to build some logic for this. Okay, let's go ahead and build that. So I'm gonna add a custom column, uh, and I'm going to use this uh, start date, end date, and period start and period end to figure out my logic. And this is how it would work. Uh, so I'm going to name this as a valid record. And the logic would be if my um, start date is before my period end date, and if my end date is after my period start date, right? Um, then uh, I give it, then this, uh, this is a valid record, I give it a value of one, else it's an invalid record. So basically what I'm saying is if my start date is before my the current period I'm working with, right? So if my start date, if 7.30 is uh, before, um, in the scenario 12, 1, 2017, which it's not. Um, and if my end date is um, after my start date. Oh, sorry, I explained that wrong. Actually, let's look at this scenario here below. So we know this is a valid record for 7, 1, right? So if my end date, my end date is 9999. Uh, and so if my yeah, which you cannot see in the screen here, but basically this is the start date. So start date, end date, 12, nine, uh, it's 9999. So if my start date is before my month end date, which was valid, and my end date, uh, which is 999, is before my period start date, which is valid, so this record becomes valid, all right? So let's click OK. and wait for it to uh, go through the logic. So once it's uh, 
uh, once we have this, now I'm gonna filter this to only the valid rows. So all the ones, those are the valid rows for me. And now if I scroll back to the left, you see I have only those rows where this employee um, has actually worked for us, right? Uh, so my log looks more like my logic works. Let's uh, try it out with another employee. Uh, let me go back to data and go to my filtered rows uh, here and let's say I pick a different one. I uh, uncheck this and let me pick the next one uh, in the list here. Okay, so now if I go back to employee details, oh, before going there, let's see, this person um, started in December of uh, 2017 and terminated in July of 2018, okay? So we should see only those rows. We go to employee details. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so now you notice, uh, yeah, see you, uh, we have data starting from you know, December of 2017 and ending in July of 2018, all right? So now we know that the logic works. Let me go back to data now. What I can do is I, we don't need to load this anymore, so I'm gonna disable load of this. Continue. Uh, and then I'm going to remove this uh, filter step that we have here. Okay. And I'm gonna hit close and apply. And uh, let's see if we can build that report that we wanted. All right, now the load is complete and we see the earlier two visuals are uh, giving an error message. That's because we disabled the load of uh, the data table. So let, uh, and we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna remove this. And um, now we can create our report, right? So let's say, uh, so uh, we have the period start date. So let me say period start date and uh, I can pick employee ID. And again, this I, my report is at the month level, so I can remove all the things that I don't want. So year, month is all I need. Refocus this and drill down. So now th this report makes more sense, right? So now I can see over time how many employees uh, were there in my company. Uh, I see how it, it's gone down in 2019 and then it's picking, uh, picking back up uh, in the second half of 2019, all right? So this is a, this is a good way, uh, you know, being innovative and kind of using your data and creating data snapshots um, and expanding your data to help with your reporting needs. Hope this uh, video helps. Uh, if you've got any comments, leave them below. If not, Thanks for watching and have a nice day.